I'm Joy Hendry, an anthropologist, and I've come back to Kyushu in Japan, where I worked as a student to write my doctoral thesis. I stayed here for a year, lived in a village with 54 houses, got to know everybody very well, made family trees for everybody, attended their weddings, their funerals, all the events that happened during the year. And I've, over the years, been coming back and keeping up to date with what's happening. And now that I've retired, I've decided to bring my materials and give them back to the people. The job of an anthropologist is to get to know a group of people who think differently to oneself, usually because they speak a different language. And I chose a village called Kurotsuchi in rural Japan to begin this task when I was a student some 45 years ago. I spent a year there, part of it with my husband Dennis, when we lived in a house we were lent nearby, and I tried to become involved in as many aspects of daily life as I could. As I've been going back to keep up with members of the village, this film illustrates how long-term anthropological fieldwork can describe change as it happens. An obvious change since I first lived here is the lack of people walking about in the village, as there are now no shops, and no bathhouse drawing everyone out for their nightly soak. Less obvious are subtle changes in family life, which have informed five evolving editions of my textbook, Understanding Japanese Society, and status, some examples of which we will see in this film. This is the old bathhouse. When I was first here, I used to come here every night for a bath. And actually, I would time it. If I wanted to talk to the old ladies, they came first. Then the young people would come second. And the middle housewives, who'd been busy cooking and washing up, would come last. So depending on who I wanted to talk to, I could time my own bath to come in here and chat with people. This building was the village hall. And people would come here and meet, discuss things. They had a singing night and did various things. And it's all now closed down and become the home of the fire engine that comes out if there's a fire. It's a, an immediate response fire engine, which you find all over Japan because the houses are, the wooden houses used to burn very quickly. <laughs> this was a center of activity because in the morning there would be somebody here lighting the fire to heat the baths. It was supposed to be done in rotation by all the houses because nobody had a bath in their house and they used to take it in turns to come and light up the fire under the communal bath and everybody would come out and have their baths here. That's the door where we went, well there were two doors, a, man's, a door for the men and a door for the women. During the time I was here people began to build new houses and put baths in them so some people dropped off but people enjoyed coming to the bathhouse. They would meet their friends, they would have a chat, they would catch up on the gossip so even people had built baths baths in their own houses would sometimes come here to the public bath and then gradually as all the houses got baths they stopped using it and it's not there anymore now houses the fire engine this is mrs nakashima who used to run a fish shop here and it's the entrance to the village so every day when I came in she would pop out and say hello and if I had any questions she was very happy to answer them. She would give me fish sometimes to take home and she introduced me to people and we also were invited to dinner and she came to dinner at our house and Dennis cooked a lovely meal of Japanese food but when she came to eat the rice she decided it wasn't cooked enough and took it back to the kitchen and boiled it up a little bit further. This is the Shinboku-san, which is a sacred tree planted to replace a huge old tree that was destroyed by lightning many years before I came here, but it was quite small when I was here and it's grown larger. And every year in April, they have a, a festival to remember the old tree to the god of thunder and lightning to pray for them not to be struck by lightning again. It's also the spot around the tree where people come and play, they organise games, they have sports here and the village hall, the new village hall, which was built to replace the old one in the centre, is in this spot too. This is the new village hall, which was built to replace the old one by the old bathhouse 
and this is where I'm bringing the family trees and the big um, chart of all the people in the village to present to them uh, as I've finished using them and so that they can keep them in the village hall. The family trees were brought together in a big chart which shows how houses in the village are related to each other and I'm giving the chart to the villagers. Here I am showing it to my former neighbour Mrs Kumagai. These are some of the materials that I'm bringing back to Kurotsuchi so people can have the information I collected about them and put it in the village hall and keep it. When I first came here, I was here living here for a year, I made a book, a notebook, with each of the houses, the 54 houses in the village. This is the map that depicts where each house is. And I gave each house a page. Then on each page, I listed the people who lived in the house and their close relatives who lived nearby. I included their occupation, and then over the years, since I first came here, every time I visited, I updated the page. So I recorded who married, who died, who had children, the names of the children, where people who moved out had gone to. And I've kept this record over all the years. This is a general map I made to show where all the houses are with the numbers that I've given to each house. And this map illustrates the public house, public places like the shrine and uh, the village hall, the bathhouse as well. And this hat, map with just the numbers of the houses shows who were, which were farming houses, which houses did other occupations and which houses were mixed. And then this map shows the neighbourhoods that three large neighbourhoods that the village is divided into which have responsibility for different things, so shrines, keeping them clean, <coughs> and passing around a notice board that comes from the city um, within those neighbourhoods. So every house is in touch with every other house on a regular basis when they circulate the notice board. And this last map is of smaller groups within the neighbourhoods that help each other in times of need. So if somebody is ill, if somebody dies, if a baby is born, they run around and help with uh, everyday activities. This is Yame City Hall, where everything is administered for the whole district, including Kurotsu, the village. And when I worked here 40 years ago, they were very helpful, providing maps and explanations about the use of land. Uh, they also explained the population, how it had changed historically. And in the hall, they have an exhibition of various objects that are characteristic of Yame City, some of which are made in Kurotsuchi. So I thought we might go in and have a look at their exhibition. This is a display of objects that are made in Yame City. And uh, the Buddhist altars are very famous. The uh, lanterns made of um, lava from a local volcano. And these lanterns, which are also a characteristic feature of yeah, they, um, one of the houses in Kurotsuchi used to make these lanterns. Paper is another feature, and paper used to be made in Kurotsuchi. This is a map of uh, the tea country surrounding Yame. Tea is one of the most important products of Yame. In fact, since I used to work here 40 years ago, it's become so popular and so tasty that it's now rated the second best tea in Japan. So these are the tea fields, it's called the Piloto because it was a pilot for getting tea growing in this area when I was working here. And I was able to come and pick tea with one of the families in the village. And I picked tea for a morning, which was quite hard work, but they gave me enough rice to last Dennis and I for a month at the end of that. And this tea now has been developed since I was here over the 40 years to become the second best tea in Japan, second most favorite tea in Japan and very well known, Yamecha, Yamechi. This is a statue of Nishie Toshiyuki, the politician from this area who had the idea of opening up these tea fields. 
All this land used to be used by local people to collect wood and for other communal purposes. It was communal land and everybody had moved from burning wood stoves to having propane gas for their cooking so the land wasn't really needed for that anymore and he had this brilliant idea of opening it up to tea fields and people came and they invested in a piece of land. The names of these people down here are those who invested in the, in the land and installed little windmills to keep the frost away and ever since they've been getting a good income from this amazing set of tea fields that's grown up here. So this is Mihoko, Shibata, and we're going to visit their vast uh, acreage of greenhouses here and see what kind of work is going on inside. So this is uh, the greenhouse we're going to go inside and see what's going on. There are three Vietnamese helpers working in here with her and one of them just said hello to us as we walked by, so I guess we'll see you inside. <laughs> so Mihoko has just been explaining to me that they're taking off the, all the buds except the top one so that they'll have a, um, a nice clean long flower at the end. So this is the family that used to make paper in Kurotsu, the last paper making family and uh, Mihoko is the eldest daughter but there were only three daughters so nobody to carry on the paper making business. If she had found a husband who could make paper she would have brought him into the house and they could have done that but her husband couldn't make paper so they turned to making chrysanthemums instead. an old house when I first moved here and in it lived a man who made um, things out of bamboo and he was probably one of the poorest people in the village and his son who now owns this house and built this house was training to be a carpenter in another house around the corner and when I came here a few years later I saw he'd built this beautiful house so I came to see him and he built the house he was doing really well as a carpenter and his father who used to do the bamboo work was inside, he'd retired. <laughs> this is Mr. Kawaguchi, who is a carpenter working in the village of Kurotsuchi. He comes from Kurotsuchi. He trained as a carpenter with another Mr. Kawaguchi in Kurotsuchi and he built himself the beautiful house we filmed yesterday and this is him working on a local house making a new fence for the house. He also came to Oxford to build a Japanese room in Oxford Brooks University and uh, we were very lucky because we bought the wood here from the same man who made this wood, it had it sent to England and made a beautiful Japanese room in Oxford. This is the house of another Kawaguchi family this time they specialise in making honey. It's a big estate now with buildings and a factory, but when I was here the first time, uh, it was just a smallish house and the family had lost all their money because the grandfather had gambled it away. So they had lost their land, they'd lost their ability to farm, and they decided to try and make a business of getting, uh, gathering honey. So I went into the woods with them and saw the hives, and they began to build up a business. So this is a Kawaguchi family that doesn't grow chrysanthemums or tea. They have a honey business. And this is the young man who, when I was here 40 years ago, was a student and is now the boss of the family and he works with his son. They have hives up in the mountains all around the area. They export honey every day 
to different parts of Japan. And when I was here before, his father was just building up the business and lived in quite a small house. And they've now got a big house with uh, lots of uh, parts of the business around them. And before his father, the grandfather had been very poor. So it's a, a great example of a house building up a business and building up a, uh, a continuing business because his son's inheriting it from him and he has children and they're all working together. So they've invited us to go up into the hills with them and see where the hives are now. Clean. So here we are in our bee protection gear, coming to observe the process of uh, looking after the bees in the autumn. They, this is Mr. Kawaguchi and his son, another Mr. Kawaguchi, doing the work with the bees. And this is very interesting because I came up with the grandfather 45 years ago to see a similar process. And at the moment we're in fairly low hills, but in the summer the bees get taken up higher into the hills. And uh, now it's, because it's getting cold up there, they've brought them down here. So they're checking all the hives, seeing how much honey they can get out and uh, replacing the honey with sugary water so the bees will carry on living over the winter. I'm just coming into the local shrine for this village, Tenmangu, where um, various festivals are held and children come and play and uh, they bring new babies and new brides marrying into the village to meet the local god. As well as being a place for ceremonies and festivals, this is a safe place, thought to be a safe place for children to play. So they put swings and slide here because the local god will take care of the children. This is the shrine where people bring new babies to the village and uh, those, they come in wrapped in a beautiful colourful kimono and uh, the grand, two, ideally the two grandmothers come in and carry the new baby in and together with the mother and they present the baby to the shrine, to the local god and people who've got children of a similar age bring them to meet their new playmates and the people whose baby is being brought bring red rice, rice with azuki beans, to hand out and share with those who've come to greet the new baby. So when they have a festival here, it's all opened up. They open these gates at the front and they open the doors at the side. And so the whole shrine becomes open and people can communicate with the god who is in the back there. And the people come who are doing the festival come and sit inside and sit round and pray and share a meal together. The, um, the god that they come to visit here 
is called the Ujigami, which means the god that looks after this district, this village. But actually the shrine is to a wider god known as the god of learning, and it's called a Tenmangu. This is the Kumagai family, and when I was here 40 years ago, 45 years ago, they were my next door neighbours and helped me in many ways. This is Mr Kumagai, who was making paper, he had a paper factory. And Mrs Kumagai, who looked after the family. This is Mutsuko and Atsushi. Atsushi was two years old when I was living next door. And Mutsuko was first year middle school, and we became very good friends. This factory was built here in 1953-52 and before that his, he was only a small boy at the time and it was the first place um, in this area to make paper by machine rather than by hand. Because they made paper by machine and other people were making paper by hand around them they discriminated against them for a whole year doing something called murahachibu. So Mr Kumagai was a small boy and the other children in the village weren't allowed to walk with him. So he had to walk with the children in Kurotsuchi where I was working, which was very helpful to me because when I came to do field work here, he knew everybody in the village where I was working and could tell me all about the families, which he wouldn't have known had that not happened. So it was a serendipitous, unpleasant year and it's a Japanese custom to do it only for a year. So after the year of discrimination, then the family was fine again and that now they all get along. This is the other side of the house where Kumagai stayed and Mutsuko was pointing out that up there on the second floor was her desk that she worked at and that's the room where I used to come and stay after Dennis went back to Oxford because Mr Kumagai was worried I was on my own in my own house and I would be lonely and also because of the man who broke in he was worried about me so I stayed up here and became one of the Kumagai family <laughs> <laughs> This empty space was my house when I lived here and now it's been completely destroyed because nobody else came to live in the house afterwards and the owner, Mr Sasabuchi, just took the, ha the house away. So now there's nothing but a space left. Mr Sasabuchi lent me the house because nobody was living in it and for the cost of the electricity and the gas we were allowed to live in Mr Sasabuchi's house and so that's why we became neighbours with the Kumagais. This is, this is where the front of my house was that I stayed in and it was, that's the Kumagai's factory so you can see it was next door. You, you learned to make spaghetti yes. from our house yeah. and you learned that instead of um, going mm -hmm. like Japanese mm -hmm. noodles, mm -hmm. yeah, like you had to be quiet when mm -hmm. you were making it. And you taught, we taught you taught me to eat spaghetti. Yeah, how to eat spaghetti. So how do you eat noodles? Kind of <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> With so we, we said in eating spaghetti it's rude to make mm -hmm. that noise. Yeah. And here is the Kumagai latest generation. When mm -hmm. I lived next door to the family, Atsushi was this size, two <laughs> years old. Mm -hmm. And here is his little son who is now two years old. <laughs> and they're so alike. <laughs> When I was living in Kito Inn and Dennis, my husband, went home, I um, came home one day and found a pair of shoes in the back of the house. So I went in calling out a greeting and a man ran out of my dressing room, where I kept my clothes, because we had so many rooms I had a dressing room, <laughs> dressed in my nightie. He, his own clothes under his arm and ran to the front door and tried to get out. The front door was locked, the back door was open I suppose. And um, uh, 
got out and ran to the warehouse at the back where he'd been to deliver paper. And I picked up his shoes and ran round to Kuma Guys next door and called the police. And the poli I told the police if they came fast, they'd catch him because he had to get dressed. <laughs> and the police turned up really fast and took me and him to the police station in a car together <laughs> and spent about three hours interviewing me and calling him a robber. And I kept saying, he wasn't a robber, he didn't take anything. My camera was on the table, he didn't take that, didn't take anything. But he was dressed in my nightie. <laughs> so anyway, um, uh, they kept me for a few hours, then they sent me home, kept him in for a while. And about three days later, they came and knocked at the door and came and sat in my house and said, we don't think that man was a robber. <laughs> and I said, no, I told you he wasn't. And they said, we think he was a hentai, which means a pervert. I said, yes, very possibly. So anyway, I don't know what happened in the long run, but Mr. Kumagai, who lived next door, was worried about me being on my own. And okay, so told me he was worried about his daughters and would I like to come and sleep upstairs with them. And so I did in the next few months. One of the things I learned from the Kumagais, and also other people, of course, was how to behave in front of a Buddhist altar. And this is the Butsudan, the Buddhist altar, that belongs to the Kumagais. So in this um, place, we can remember the, the father of the Kumagai family. The photograph on the left is a brother who died in the war. And the photograph on the right is Mutsuko's mother, who very sadly died when she was just a child. The Ame Cities made this amazing new display centre to put on show the traditional objects that were made in this area. And 40 years ago when I was working here, things that were made in the village are now being put on display for the public. Let's go and have a look. Here we have a display of lanterns, and this was one of the things that was being made in the village when I was there 40 years ago. This man's making bamboo baskets in here for display for tourists. And if you remember in the village, Kurotsuchi, there was a man who made bamboo baskets in the past and I pointed out his house and that it was one of the poorest houses in the village and it's now where the carpenter lives and has become a carpenter making big houses. Hi, Aliyah. This is a place where they're making paper for demonstration purposes to show how it used to be made in the houses. Like one of the houses in Kurotsuchi when I was there and 30 of the houses in the past. This is the table that was used in the house when the cake was made and it's got the bark in all mixed up into a mush and this lady demonstrates how to make the paper for people. She's making paper with leaves in it at the moment. See, these are fans which are being made with the handmade paper and to decorate the fans they've got autumn leaves. こちらに吸いて、かけよう。はい。そして、この後に内側の骨を入れて、もう1回吸いてお花を乗せて、その後にこれかけてサンドイッチに。はい。
So she's explaining this is the way you make paper, and she's putting the leaves in to make the fans, and that will be the leaves will be sandwiched between two pieces of paper made here in the paper making. This is a display of lanterns made from lava that are characteristic of Yame. One of the families in the village is making lanterns like this. The lady behind the desk here has given me a map showing where there are houses still making, still actively making paper as a business. Well, that was really interesting. The objects that were being made in the village when I was working here have now become part of the traditional culture that Yame puts on display for visitors. So in my lifetime, it's moved from being everyday use, objects of everyday use, to being objects of display. Interesting, because later on I became interested in cultural display myself. So the tea they were starting to grow when I was first here is now a very successful Yame product. And we can see here all the different ways in which it's being offered for sale. So, cakes made of tea, ice cream made of tea, and tea itself in various different forms. <laughs> Hello. 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 This is the house of the people who were getting married when I was here doing my research first and they're on the cover of my book about marriage. They've still got the cover of the book so we're going to see that inside. And their children, are on when they were little, about this side, are on the cover of the next book I wrote about bringing up children. So we're going to see that cover too. this is the cover of the first book I wrote based on my thesis about marriage in changing Japan, but mostly about marriage in this community. And the people on the cover are this man, Hideshi Shibata, and Tomoko Shibata. So Tomiko-san, Mrs. Shibata, came from Mariyama to marry Mr. Shibata, and she's been living in this village ever since. And they had three children, and they now have seven grandchildren, and five of them have come to see us here. So this is another edition of the same book that came out later with a picture of Tomoko-san, Mrs. Shibata, with the older Mrs. Shibata, who is Hideshi's mother, visiting the shrine, because she was a new bride coming to visit the shrine. And Mrs. Shibata, the older one, is now up there because she's passed on, so she's above the Buddhist altar. This is the second book I wrote about growing up as a child in Japan, and I've got this family on this book as well, so these were the children of these this couple, and the grandfather, who's also up there by the Buddhist altar, and these grandchildren are the children of these children. This is the family tree I made when I was here, and it includes this family, who are a branch family of a family we visited the other day, we went to their greenhouses, and that's the main line of the Shibata family. And if you look at this family tree, you can see all the people in this family back to the brother of the man who carried on the main line of the other family. And they're both 
descended from these two people at the top of the tree. I've made family trees like this for each of the families in the village and if they wanted to they've made the copies of their own but the whole collection will go into the village hall and be there for people to consult if they want to. Well, that was fun, visiting Hideshi and his wife again, the people on the front of my first book, and seeing the grandchildren who grew from the people on the front of the second book. So it's quite nice meeting all these people again over the years. That symbol on the roof of that house is the Kawaguchi household crest, the inverted V at the top, which they also put on kimonos at weddings. Uh, on, even for poor, small boys being taken to the shrine, they might have the Kawaguchi symbol on it, or a little black kimono. In this house too, you can see the Kawaguchi household crest above the door, the inverted V. And actually, I saw this house being built, and we filmed it when I came with the BBC to make a film here. So this house is about 40 years old. So this lady doing the weeding here is the daughter-in-law of the head of the village when I was here 45 years ago. She actually comes from one of the other houses in the village and married into this house. And now the old head of the village has died, wife's died and her husband's died. So she's the senior member of the house and she lives with her son and wife and they have three children and several great-grandchildren. I'm going to hand over the originals of the family trees to the head of the village so that he can put them in the village hall. Now that I've finished taking them around all the houses, I'm just going to leave them with him. This is Mr. Kawaguchi Yukio and he was, he was the head of the village uh, when I came last year to discuss handing over the family trees I've made. And so I'm now I'm also giving him this book that I've written, which has a whole chapter, pretty much, about this village, explaining that a lot of the material I gathered, I gathered in this village first. I learned a lot about Japanese society working here. So I want to leave them with a copy of the book. So this is the head of the village at the moment, Mr. Kawuchi Yukio, and I'm handing over the original family trees to him and he's going to keep them safely and hand them on to the next head in each generation so that they're kept for the village to study or other people to come and study or if somebody in the village wants to look at them, they're safely here. <laughs> Thank you very much. And this is a nice spot to leave and sad, but I've left all the work I've done over the years safely and <laughs> so we're going to the village hall, this is Kurotsuchi, and I'm going to take back the family trees I made 45 years ago, and the big chart of all the families in the village, and some of the Villagers, I think, are coming to see them. The head of the village has arranged for the uh, some kind of a committee, but we'll see when we get there. I don't know who's going to be there. And then we're going to show them their family trees and see who would like to get copies of them and keep them and so on.
黒土のあの四十五年前。でこのチーズを自作はね、うん、そうそうそう。チーズの番号に書いてある。家の番号はこの下に書いてあります。いやいやまだまだ。四十七番。こっちのこれ食べようと。これはあの列車の母ちゃんじゃなかあーそうかあそうそういやお外だったけどうんそうそう。Well, there we are. I've handed over the documents. Everyone seemed very interested. And、uh, they've made copies of their own family trees. And they studied the family tree to find themselves and made copies of their own family trees to take home to see. I think it went pretty well. It was nice to see the old picture that they made when I was here 40 odd years ago with all the women in the village. The Pujinkai, the women's group, they made a picture and they kept it up in the village hall all those years. Okay, that's me. I've delivered the things I collected about Karotsky back to the villagers, and now I'm going to fly back home with my new pink case to take all the presents I've been given. And hopefully, and maybe I'll return, maybe I won't, who knows, but at least I've taken back the work I've done over 45 years. Bye!